Welcome to this tutorial on working with Adobe Bridge to begin processing your images after a photo shoot. This tutorial is specifically designed for the photojournalism students at the Hubbard School of Journalism and Mass Communication at the University of Minnesota. My name is Regina McCombs and I teach that class. If anyone else finds it useful, that's awesome. All right, so we're going to start with Bridge and we are going to start with Bridge in the Essentials layout. When I'm at my computer, I can see that I have my hard drive connected, I have my SD card connected, and I have my external drive connected. I've labeled my SD card SD1, and I've labeled my external drive red because it just happens to be red. So what I wanna do is go into my SD card. We're gonna copy these images from here onto my external drive and rename them at the same time. So when I go into my SD card, I'll see I have a bunch of folders. I've actually used it to record some video files as well as my photo files, so I'm gonna ignore most of these. Canon creates a folder called DCIM. If you have a different kind of camera, it may create some different folder names here. This miscellaneous folder, you can always just ignore. So I go into DCIM, again, I've got a miscellaneous that I'm gonna ignore, and I have 100 Canon. If I had more than 1,000 images, I would have 101 Canon, 102 Canon, etc. cetera. Um, so if you're looking for your most recent images, you're gonna to wanna to go to your highest number. Here we just have the one, so we're gonna go here and click and see the pictures that I took at my nephew's graduation last year. Uh, there's some good ones, some bad ones, so we're going to talk about how it is that we sort them. But first of all, we're going to take them and we're going to copy them from the SD card to the external drive and rename them at the same time so that they have a logical name and not this sort of magical mystery na file name that means nothing. So what I'm going to do first is hit Command-A, Control-A on a PC. So that's going to select them all, A for all, and it tells me I have selected 636 items, and I see there's 636 items in my folder, so all is well. Now the way that I can copy them and rename them in one step is to go up here to Tools and hit Batch Rename. So there's lots of different options for batch renaming. I'm going to copy to another folder rather than rename them in the same folder or move them. And then I'm going to browse here and find the folder I want, where I want to put them. So I want them to go to my external drive. So I'm going to navigate to red and I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm going to use the same file naming convention we're going to use for our other things. So I recorded this last year, 2008-0602. And I'm going to call it Ian Graduation. Oops, there we go. And create. And then I have to hit open here. All right, so now it's showing me that I'm going to copy these onto red into this folder. Great. So now it asks me if I, what text I want to use, what date I want to use. I actually want to start with the date, so I'm going to get rid of that text. Uh, we're going to start with the date time, and I, we're going to use the date created, and we're going to have it use the four-digit year, month, date. Now I want to add a text file our text to the, the name string. So I'm going to call this underscore Ian graduation. And you'll see as I type down here, it's going to show me um, what the file name looks like. So I'm actually going to add an underscore at the end here too. So now as I look down, I see I've got the date, Ian graduation, and then it's going to ask me how I want to sequence number them. So we're going to start with zero and we're going to use three digits. So we have 001 there. All right. So now all I have to hit do is hit rename and it's going to begin to copy these and rename them as it moves them over. Now, because this takes a few minutes to do, I'm going to hit pause here and not make you watch the little bar creep across the screen. So the files are finished and I'm going to make sure that my files have indeed copied over. One of the things you'll notice in Bridge is it always shows you the path to where you are. So I can see that I'm still on my SD card. You never want to work on your files on the SD card. You always want to be sure you copy them to a hard drive and then work on them. So whenever you're starting to edit, check this path up here to your files and make sure you're not on that SD card. All right, so I can actually click up here and it will show me the other items in that folder. So I can click here and now I see that I'm on red and 
I want to go to Ian graduation, right? And look, there's 636 items in there, which is perfect. All right, so now I look up here and I double check and I'm working on red, not on my external drive. I mean, not my SD card. I never want to work on my SD card. So I'm actually going to come over here and just eject that SD card so that I make sure that I'm not doing any work on it. All right. Now that we know all our images are in here and we can see that they're all named how we want them to be, uh, we are going to replace the metadata. So we're going to make sure all of the images have some basic information in them. And the metadata is sort of digital data that stays with the images and is only visible from inside certain software like Bridge or Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually once again, hit command A and select them all. And then I'm going to come up here to file and file information. And it's going to open a window that shows me uh, the metadata and it shows I have no metadata in here, right? If I click on camera data, it shows me the camera I recorded it on and some of the settings I had, but this is blank. So I'm going to start to fill this in. So I'm going to put my byline here and then under description is where your caption will go. So I'm going to, I typed this once already, so I'll just fill this in. Graduation in St. Cloud on June 2nd, 2018. Actually, let's get that right. And then I'm going to put my byline again in parentheses. So if for some reason someone doesn't see the author field, they know that I am the photographer here. If you want to put in keywords, if you want to make your um, images very searchable on your computer, that can be really helpful. We're going to get in the habit of copywriting our images as well. So I'm going to switch that to copyright. I'm going to use option G, which gives me the copyright symbol. And I'm going to put my name. And then you want to put some kind of contact information. It might be your website. It might be an email address, some way that if people find your image somewhere and want to license it, they know how to reach you, right? Or they want to hire you for a project, they know how to reach you. So I'm going to put my university email there. Now I'm going to hit the okay button and it's going to write this to all of the files. It doesn't take very long and just give it a few seconds here. And we see this little thing churning and we will know that it is writing all the metadata to all those files. Now they all should have the exact same information in them. We can check this by clicking on one of the images, do a command I for information and I can see, yep, it's all there. So that's great. So now they all have the same information. When it comes time to finish these images, I will write um, individual captions for each image. But for now, I have sort of that basic information in there. So now I like to work in film strip mode at this stage. We're going to actually sort of rank our images. We're going to start to make some choices about what we like and what we don't. And we're going to do that using the stars. Now you'll see, I can adjust the size of my image here versus the size of the thumbnails. I like to see them as big as possible. And then you can just start quickly scrolling through your images and seeing which are good and which are bad, right? So I go through them one at a time. And I use my command key and then my number key, and I'm going to start marking the ones I like. So I'm going to start to do some one stars. And then after I've done the one stars, I'm going to do that for any of them that I think are passable. So skip through these. That's boring. I'm going to just do a few more here. So all of that, I get to where I have all of the ones I might possibly use with one star. Now I can actually go up here to this little filter, this funnel, and I can look at the ones that are just have one star or more. And so I can see sort of which ones are more interesting or not. So this one is better than that one. So I'm going to give this one a two star. So I can start to sort of rank them and I'll go two stars and three stars. So my two and threes, I start to say, okay, those are pretty good. Um, and then depending on how many you need for a finished assignment, you can get to your four and up to five stars.
If I have a number of images that are pretty similar that I want to move them next to each other, I can actually click down on the file name and drag them around so I can compare images side by side if I think they, they're similar, um, and then start to eliminate them from there. So for this assignment, you're going to want to have one labeled with a five star, one labeled with a four star, and one labeled with a three star to show me which images you like the best. Um, I tend to make multiple passes until I'm very, very close. And then once I have just a few labeled four and five stars, I will open those in Photoshop and start to tone them. So that'll be our next lesson.